You're listening to Beyond the Sermon, the podcast of First Methodist Church in Collingswood, New Jersey. On our podcast, the goal is not just to share our sermons, but to go beyond the sermon and talk about what we're learning and what God is doing in us and in our community. The conversation you're about to join was inspired by our 2024 summer sermon series, Apocalypse Now, Revelation's Call to Be Faithful Witnesses. In this series, we're talking about what Revelation meant for its original audience and what it means for the church today. You can find more information about our church at fumccollingswood.org. Thanks for joining us for this conversation. We're here with a very special edition of our uh, podcast. It is not about Revelation, even though it's happening this summer, although I guess there could be some revelations that are made. Um, But we have an opportunity to hear from a handful of our youth who participated in our most recent uh, youth mission trip to Harrisburg to serve with YouthWorks. And so why don't you take a minute and let us know who is here, starting with you, Jeremy. I'm Jeremy. I went with a peg leg, and I came back with a peg leg. Success. I'm Tim Rambo. Joanna Alexander. Bethany Alexander. <laughs> Madison McDevitt. Josiah Rambo. I'll start off, because yesterday in our small groups in Sunday school, I was with uh, Timothy Plotz, who also went on the mission trip, and one of the people said, hey, Timothy, how was the mission trip? He said, good, and then she was like, what'd you do? He's like, I scoop poop, and that was it. I was like, I think more context would have been helpful, and so uh, if you guys could share a little bit about our service projects that we did, and that'll differentiate between our kids here, and maybe a little bit about the organizations that we served as well. So on Monday, we went to a Christian Performing Arts Center, and they had a summer camp going um, similar to our VBS, but they were practicing a performance for the end of the week. I think it was the Wizard of Oz. But on Monday, we went and we just cleaned the facility and different rooms. And on Thursday, we were responsible for their morning chapel. So each person had different jobs for, like, a group game or there was a skit and then there was a lesson with small groups afterwards and we just stayed and ate lunch with the kids and hung out with them what other opportunities were there well i was at the junior high so we did poop scoop (laughs) but it was for horses so kids can get their exercise that they need because um some of the kids were like you know mentally challenged and stuff so they don't always get the chance to exercise as you know we have the same chances so we got to help the animals in their like cages get clean so that they can provide the services that for the kids who need it okay great and that's what you did the whole week? Well, that was, <laughs> that was on Wednesday, I think. But for the other days, we helped um, garden and weed the plants. Because <laughs> one of the days, I think it was, I think it was Tuesday, we went to this garden in the city, Al- Allison Hill, and um, they provide a food stand for people who can't always like go to the grocery store because they're in a food desert, food drought, where like there's not any close like grocery stores where they can just easily like pick up like food. Yeah. So they set up a stand where they can um, sell groceries at a reasonable price for people who need it outside of a like a healthcare center health center so I think that was really cool that we got to do so I went with the senior high group and on Tuesday we had the opportunity to help out at a local food bank where we worked on passing out food to people making boxes and bags of other food to give out and I think in total we handed out 90 boxes and even more food after the boxes were done so it was a really interesting opportunity to help get help and serve the community. That's great. On Wednesday, we went to a farm, Wild the Heart, that Maddie just told us about, mm-hmm. where they grow food and sell at an affordable price to the people in that community. And there we worked on weeding and shoveling and spreading mulch. And I caught a wasp nest, and then I hobbled away on my peg leg. <laughs> yes, that was an adventure of its own. But what's like one of the crazy, ridiculous moments, just like silly, ridiculous things that happened this week that come to mind? 
Is it okay. your chair? Yeah. That's what you get for leaning on it every day, taking those naps. We played um, head, shoulders, knees, toes, and cup. And one of the rounds, I wasn't really paying attention, but all of a sudden, you just heard a huge crash. And there's a table on the floor and crowds everywhere. And then there's two people on the side, like, rolling on the floor. And they were fighting over this cup ridiculously. It was hysterical. And what was that table that they knocked over with all the crowns? Oh. Uh, it, so that table had bags on it with, like, everyone's name. And the goal was to write people positive notes and just, like, compliments and all that stuff in their bags to take home with them and just, like, to uplift other people. Not Riz, though. No Riz allowed. <laughs> no Riz allowed. Agreed. We got to pick off beetles off of plants, and me and another girl, Reese, but we got a jar filled with soapy water, and we were just picking off bugs off plants for, like, an hour, <laughs> and we got a lot of them. You did, and there's a picture of that, yeah. I think, on the youth Instagram. Yeah, there is a picture, so go like it up. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know, Jeremy really values skincare. And <laughs> Bro, his... fact, I do have Trisex one, so I needed it. Yeah, continue. <laughs> he brought a nice cooling cucumber face mask and was so generous to share it with me. And it's not it's not like a physical mask where we just alternated who wore the mask. It was like the I mean, it's just like a gel. So you like wipe the gel on and then it peels off. Anyway, so I'll share mine. Ridiculous and regretful. Being in the peg leg is when we went to City Island. Uh, I played beach volleyball with my peg leg and won. But uh, after that, my knee was pretty sore, especially because we had to like I had to hobble was like a half mile each way down that thing. So that was a little intense, but still fun. So one fun thing I did was one time at free time, I didn't have anything to do. So then I just played a game of chess with Tyler. And that was and, really fun. And you got beat. No, I beat him. You beat him? Yeah. I don't know, ridiculous, but it was very fun and enjoyable for me to pull out nails on Monday with all oh, screws pull out screws on Monday with Nick yeah no we had the senior high boys because the Christian Performing Arts Center makes their own stage and props and all that kind of stuff so because they don't have the most funds like a theater company um, they reuse wood and so we were like getting screws and nails out of uh, giant planks of wood so that they could be reused um, for future events which is super awesome what was something that surprised you uh, about the place that you got to go serve? Or what were you not expecting that you ended up really enjoying about the place? I would say that weeding actually turned out to be fun, even though we did it, like, multiple, multiple days. You have to see even how, like, tiniest thing of, like, pulling a few weeds, like, helps so much more that you can't see, but, like, you know it's happening. Um, but as the junior high, we got to go to like an old folks home, and I wasn't really expecting to talk to that many um like people. But I got to talk to a lot of the women there, and I got to talk about their um just like their lives when they were younger. And I thought that was really cool to see how like it was, how different it was, and how it's just so much different than my life now. And I just thought that was really cool. So when we went to the the horse place called Catra, after we had finished in the last like 10 minutes, they let us play with some of the animals before we went back to shower. So you got to play with horses? No, but we got to play, well, kind of, but we got to play with donkeys and goats mm. mostly. I guess I was surprised at how much food the food pantry had and like how many people really need food in that community. Like the line was... Like, across the street and around the block, there were so many people. But also, like, locals in the area were dropping off food. There was another church who came with a ton of celery. What, <laughs> nobody wanted celery, but... <laughs> um, and Costco donated a ton of pastries and bread. So it was really cool to see everyone come together to provide for those people. Yeah, I was, I was really surprised at the food bank of a couple things. One, the people waiting four hours before distribution. 
and then also like the amazing community of volunteers that they have there on a regular basis were just so sweet and loving and energetic but they also knew when they had to be tough with the people that were trying to like uh, get more or get things their way, whatever it might be. And they found that I, I felt like they had like the perfect balance of all of that. Oh yeah. And also like that some of the volunteers are also on the receiving end of the ministry. And so they're serving those in need while they themselves are also in need. And so that was really encouraging as well. What's one way that you saw God show up this week, or you saw God maybe in a different way than you've seen him before? Um, one way that I thought really opened my eyes was the foot washing um, ceremony, I think. Like the people who ran Youth Works, which is the mission, the thing we went to, um, they washed our leaders' feet, and then our leaders washed our feet. And it was, you know, it was like, even though like they're, our leaders are so much older and wiser than us, they still like took the time out of their day to like wash our feet. And I thought that was really cool because like... And it was really cool just to see everyone, like, praying over each other. And just, like, it just was so cool to see everyone, like, praising the Lord just in a different way that I never would have expected, like, washing people's feet. I think that it was just so cool. And, like, yeah. No, it was a a beautiful time because we would have devos and a gathering each day. So if someone could, like explain what devos and gathering look like for us in the week. So for devotionals, they set aside 30 minutes in the morning before we went to our service sites to spend time with God. And they gave each person a little devotional packet with questions and scripture that goes along with it. They keep you in the right mindset. And especially before you go out to serve other people. And so after we got back from our showers and had dinner at the end of the day, we would do a service with everyone there led by like the leaders at Youth Work and some other people. And we would sing, worship, and then there'd be a lesson about how we should stay rooted. (laughs) And then we would break into our small church groups and discuss that. And so our, our last night was the foot washing that Maddie had shared about. And it was beautiful because not just the washing, but also praying over one another. And uh, like she had mentioned, can anyone guess, because I know, but can anyone guess how long we were praying over each other? I would say like an hour 45. It was around an hour and 10. Really? Mm-hmm. But like, it's just like so immersed in it of time, just kind of, you know. Uh, fluctuated yeah but it was just a a beautiful time but it very quickly turned into just everyone praying over everyone and then just like alternating we would like chair hop to who we were gonna pray with as leaders and as as students and so it was it was a very very holy time yeah no that definitely stuck out to me do you think there was some significance to the how meaningful that experience was having done it at the end of your time together, having served all week in these different ways. I think it was cool that um, during the week we were going out to serve other people who might not know Jesus, but at the end of the week we were able to serve each other and put ourselves like in in the position of Jesus serving his people. What other ways did God show up? Please don't edit this out. That is true. That is how I saw God. Uh, it was the justice that was served. For some reason, every morning this cop waited at the same spot to pull people over. So while we were outside doing our devotionals, we would see him pull someone over and uh, see justice served. And we would sometimes play Bad Boys, uh, the song from my phone speaker, while they were getting pulled over. And at that same time, Randall went and said hi to the cops during one time. Dwayne. Dwayne. Sorry. Dwayne. The Rock Johnson. No. Dwayne uh, went and said hello. And so can anyone share a testimony of how awesome Dwayne is? I don't know how many of you got to talk to him. So one more. I think it was the first morning, Monday. Did it, We saw this older man. He was just working around the church property, just cleaning it up, making it look nice. And he introduced himself to us as we were going out to do devos and we just got to a really nice conversation on how we're a part of their missions that they do at their church and that they're just really blessed to have us there. Dwayne's a custodian at uh, 
the church we stayed at. And everyone was like hyping him up. Like Macy, like the youth work staff, Macy, Alexis, and Kaylee were like, oh, Dwayne's just the best. I love Dwayne, blah, blah, blah. And I like hadn't gotten time to interact with him. And then the last day I got like two minutes. I was like, you are the sweetest old man in the world. Can we take you home? Because <laughs> uh, he, he really just like just so much love and light coming out of him and just, yeah, glorifying God in everything he does. And it was just a beautiful witness. Watch we'll call it. Our week was not spent with just our group. Uh, we had some new friends. Uh, can anyone talk about that experience? Because in previous youth, like retreats and stuff, and it's not just you guys, but like every time I've been, it's like we worship together, and like maybe one kid makes another friend, but we don't like really intermingle as much as we would hope to, and so. I would say, what do you think was different about this trip that made you guys uh, get so many new friends? And also tell us a little bit about our new friends. I think that was different about this trip was that we were serving alongside each other. So we were like out in the heat together. So I feel like we really just connected in that way. And we just like could, I don't know, we spent a lot of time talking to each other and stuff. But one of the people I met, um, it was Sammy. But at the the foot washing when we were praying over each other. We both prayed for each other and it was really great. And it was really fun to pray with her. <laughs> well, a lot of crying, but it was really fun and meaningful to be pound sign rooted, always. If you didn't know, um, a hashtag is also a pound sign. And <laughs> Explain what a hashtag is first. Um, also a number sign. And so the theme for the week was rooted, so we stayed poundside rooted. There's also more to that. Junior high. <laughs> no. Junior high, because we were the ones who spent every day weeding. So we would rate each root on how each weed on how rooted they were in Christ. Be like, ooh, she's rooted. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> also, how Fountain Rooted came to be <laughs> was that was that me and Hannah Plotz, one of the leaders, um, we were just talking about, you know, the theme, and she was like, because they told us to use hashtags, and I was talking to her, and I was like, wait, isn't a pound sign the same thing as a hashtag? So that's how Fountain Rooted happened. <laughs> Reminder to put this in the front of the podcast as a disclaimer uh, of terminology that will be used throughout the podcast. So, friends, relationships, <laughs> Mr. Ringling, what do you think was different? Or if you'd like to add to what Maddie said and also tell us about a friend you made. So, during service, I think we already mentioned we were split up in groups, but the senior high was in a group with the other church's senior high, and then junior high with the same and um I don't know it was just a nice experience to bond with them and like at retreats and other camps you kind of stay in your own groups during the day but they kind of forced us to be together not like forced us but and we were able to talk to them more I think the reason that we were able to make friends easier is because we're kind of with them the whole time and if you're not gonna talk to and build relationships with other people of like mindset that are around you all day. I feel like that kind of naturally happens, especially when you're working together trying to accomplish the same goal. Yeah, no, it was nice, because even by, like, day two, I could, like, the youth work staff couldn't tell who was with yeah. which church, because we were just in free time sitting together and meals sitting together and worship, like, all mixed together. It was uh, really, really great to see that happening for hands. Yeah. And even towards the beginning of the week when we didn't really know people, you could just see um, like how willing they were to help us, even if we had never talked before. And like when you're doing the same thing, helping one another. They were very willing to help you as you guys yeah. served together. Like when I was pumping out my air mattress with my foot. <laughs> what would be one of your big takeaways that changed you while you were there or something you learned about yourself that you want to approach differently or do differently now that you're back from that mission trip? I would say just getting to truly 
know what it feels like to serve other people, even though, like, you don't want to. Like, truly having a servant's heart and just doing all of that with God's love and just doing what's mostly needed. I would say that um, going into the week, I was kind of nervous about, like, working in the heat. Not that we did as much as the junior high, but we were out in the heat a few days, and um, I just don't, like, sweat (laughs) or getting dirty, and I don't, like, God just provides joy, like, even if, like, I don't know, I, I was fine being in the hot all day because I knew it was helping other people. I feel like one thing that I took away was, oh, sorry, I feel like one thing I took away was just, like, that, like, sharing God with other people, like, not from church, and even these, like, pat, like, literally, like, three days since we've been away from the missions trip, I've literally got to tell my friend about Jesus, who I never thought I would be able to tell her, but I feel like from the missions trip, I feel like I just learned so much that I was able to tell her with, like, stuff I learned from the missions trip. Um, so one evening, every evening there was an activity, and one of the evenings we went to an island in the middle of some river, I don't know the name. Susquehanna. Susquehanna. Oh. And there was a bridge, and on it was a Muslim man. He held a sign that said, Jesus never claimed divinity. Let's talk. And Jeremy's brave soul decided to go talk to him. Yeah, yeah. So that that was the night that we were on the island, and um, a bunch of the kids wanted to come with me uh, for that, but I didn't want it to be a, like, gang-up mentality of, like, the— I mean, I didn't want the whole crew pulling up. So I said, I was like, I'll take one kid. And so I ended up taking Timothy Plotz and just just for him to witness it and talking about like how we set our hearts before these conversations of like being humble, trying to share truth and grace, like knowing that God, you know, Jesus died for this individual as well. Um, And we also wanted to like gauge the heart of the person within the conversation didn't want someone that was just there to scream and yell and you know had their ears shut to anything else they were just there to prove people that they were right and so we went up and um jut and his friend was there uh and um we got to have a lovely conversation it was very kind um and not like um, it it wasn't like aggressive it wasn't it wasn't aggressive evangelism and so we got talking and uh, he was already in the middle of a conversation with someone else about um, Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But uh, but essentially, he was arguing that all the prophets were the way, the truth, and the life at their time. And was not able to provide scripture in the Bible or the Quran that backed that up. And then uh, I brought up, Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. And he said that, all prophets were there at the beginning of time and spirit and uh, knowledge, but also was unable to provide any form of scripture to back that up. But the the focus why I brought up John eight fifty eight is because it's Jesus claiming two big things, claiming a name for God, I am, which in Exodus 3, God says, I am who I am. And when he sends Moses to Pharaoh, he says, tell them I am has sent you. But he's also naming a characteristic of God, of being there since the beginning of time, being present now. And the assumption would be in the future. So it's the Alpha Omega in that statement. And then he was kind enough, I got his number, tried to see when else that week that we would be able to meet up with him, because it also led to, like, Jesus, um, I was like, you know, I'm probably going to believe the guy that died and rose from the dead when he talks about divinity over Muhammad, who did not. And then Tyler came up, and we were done, and we were about to leave, so we left, got his number, and we tried <laughs> we tried to go back, um, but I think it was still very fruitful and, and lovely. Tried to go back to talk to him when we thought that there was a lot of free time to do so, at least an open time that was okay to do so. And I got to take our very own Joanna Alexander and Emma Kastner. And he had texted me about the sign of Jonah prior to us arriving there. And when we arrived, he was already talking to someone else about it. Joanna, would you be able to explain what he was trying to tell or share? So he was talking about how when Jesus said, just like Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, he was going to be in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. 
And Jut was trying to say that Jesus doesn't fulfill that because he was only dead for barely three days and only two nights. And so, sadly, we uh, only had five minutes with Judd this time before we got the call that our group was done with uh, their activity. And so we ended up having to go back um, early. But one of the things that I love about evangelizing um, in general and having these conversations is it gives us a reason to go back into scripture to find the answers because it always has the answers. And so uh, it led to us to lean into this because I never focused on Jesus talking about Jonah. I was like, oh yeah, that's a thing. Like, and then him talking about greater than Jonah. Yeah, Jesus was greater than Moses. He was greater than Jonah. Like, it's not a scripture that we typically hyper-focus on. Um, So, therefore, I didn't think of the literalism of what Jut was talking about. And so, we came back and we started digging into Bibles with our friend Allison. Shout out to Allison, who has been uh, living in Jordan for three or four years now? Two years? And has been uh, working alongside uh, Muslims and learning about their culture and their beliefs to evangelize to them. And so we got to dig in, and in John 19, 31, it says, Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath, because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath. They asked uh, Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. And so um, when, when Passover is happening, there's a special Sabbath, and Passover shifts because they go by lunar calendar, so where it lands in the year um, can change. But it is, it is believed to have happened the day prior to the normal Sabbath. Normal Sabbath is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, and this would have been Thursday sundown to Friday sundown, which means Jesus dying on Thursday and then coming out of the tomb Sunday would have been the three days and the three nights as he had uh, prophesied in, I think it's in Matthew and in Mark, the thing about Jonah. Uh, And so it was really interesting, even though it messes up how we celebrated as Christians with Good Friday and Easter Sunday, um, really interesting to see uh, how God's word just holds true, uh, even against all the scrutiny. And we're hoping to stay in contact with Jut and see what other fruitful conversations can happen with him. But uh, Joanna, what was your uh, experience like going into that? Because it was a little anxious to be in that environment. It's a new thing. Um, well, I was a little nervous going into it, just that I guess we wouldn't know how to counter what he was trying to claim. And like, we're supposed to be leading people towards Jesus. But if we can't, if we don't have all the answers, it might not work out. But I guess the mindset switched when we saw him because he was just really calm and like eager to have a conversation. And also, it's not our job to like make him believe. It's our job to lead him to Jesus. Also, it was really encouraging. Both times we went to see him, there was already other Christians talking to him Mm -hmm. and to see how other people care enough to go lead him to Jesus too was um, encouraging. I feel like one time I saw God was really unexpected was some of the girls we just like talked at night. And I feel like, well, a lot of the nights we just talked to each other and (laughs) we discussed things that I never thought to discuss and I thought that was just really cool to see God in a way that I was just like what how does this work with this because like this is just this (laughs) so I thought that was really cool that we could talk to each other about stuff that you can't always bring up you know on on just conversation to add on to that I feel like every time we had a conversation like different people would bring up different scripture and like just shows like how much like you don't think you'll remember scripture but like if you keep reading it like stays in your heart I don't know what's the verse like hide his word in your heart and it was cool to see how everyone like had scripture to back up what they were saying during those conversations but um another thing I learned one evening during the gathering they were reading the passage that says like love is patient love is kind and um I think my perspective switched, like, love isn't about what you get. It's truly outward, and especially, like, going into service, sometimes you might go in with the mindset of, like, like you're going to get something out of it yourself, but it's 
about it's truly about what you can give to other people. Any last things you guys wanted to share about your experience that you think maybe people would want to hear about? Because I know it's a lot and we're still processing. And The van ride back home was fun because... You napped. Well, I actually... Actually, I finished my devos and then I read scripture and then Josiah <laughs> told me some really great songs. I don't even know what the songs are called. M- Master of the Puppets. <laughs> and then, okay, I don't know. But yeah. And then I got to read a chapter of John, John 15. Because mm-hmm. I was talking to Joanna about this verse and I couldn't even remember it. But I. Yes, yeah, this is one evening. And yeah, this is another evening. We were talking about this. And then I just went in my Bible app and was like, Let's read John 15 today. And then I was like, John 15, 18, that's what I was talking about. For anyone wondering, it's if the world hates you, remember it hated me first or something like that. Something more, maybe more you smarter, know. but. <laughs> yeah. I would say just all the conversations that happened over the time, there was a lot of fruitful conversations, either that I overheard or that I was part of. And it was just, it was nice. It was really nice. Yeah, even in downtime, you would think like, uh, I don't know, I feel like in retreats, it's like God time, God time, God time. And then when it's not official God time, then like we just do fun and chaos. But to see like the downtime and free time also be like, have some fruitful conversations and scriptural conversations is really, really encouraging. Pound sign rooted. (laughs) Pound sign rooted. Found sign rooted. Found sign rooted. Found sign rooted. Three. Found sign rooted. Well, that's our conversation for today. But that doesn't mean the conversation is over. We'd love to hear your thoughts on these topics as well. To ask a question about anything we've discussed in this episode or to join the conversation, you can head over to fumccollingswood.org slash podcast. Thanks for being part of this conversation.